Smash Ultimate Summit 2 provided an entire weekend full of hours and hours of interesting sets in the singles bracket alongside some other great content from side events. But with all 16 players at the event playing at least 5 best of 5 sets, there's a pretty good likelihood that you weren't able to catch it all. No worries, Pro Guides is here to help by condensing it all with our Smash Ultimate Summit 2 recap. And if you're looking to make an appearance on our next event recap, check out ProGuides.com for on-demand coaching to get you prepared to compete at the next major. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to our Play With Pros platform, along with a plethora of exclusive content all posted daily. Make sure you don't miss our new Pro Course with MKLA himself, a new one with Esam, as well as others coming soon. But with all that out of the way, let's start by talking about the four players who have the unfortunate distinction of last, which was 13th at the event. First up was Tweak at 13th place. There was for sure a few players that were expected to finish last at Ultimate Summit 2, but Tweak was for sure not one of them. All of the polls at the event were pretty packed with talent, but his that also included Zachary, DeBuzz, and Mudes was especially so. Playing Wario, Pokemon Trainer, and Wolf, Tweak was only able to beat Mutes. He lost 2-3 to Zachary for the third time this season, and another head-to-head -head record fell into the red against the Buzz this season by losing 1-3. But everyone started in winner's side in the finals bracket, so it looked like Tweak still had time to redeem himself. Unfortunately, those pools losses did set him up for a round one date with MKLeo, who cleanly swept him with Joker. And then down in losers, Leffen pulled off the upset of the tournament by knocking him out of the event in a Pokemon Trainer ditto, which included a three stock in the set's final game. It's sad to see how much of a fall from Grace Tweak has had across the last couple of months from someone who is a few sets away from being number one in the world into just another top 10 player. Hopefully we'll see him in his old form soon, but it really does still appear that he needs to figure out what he's doing character-wise. Then we have Arfang also at 13th. Another sad tale is the one of Arfang who not only finished 13th, but did not take a single game across his five sets. To be fair to Arfang, those five sets were against Mars, Meister, Samsora, Nairo, and Zachre, all of who are top 10 players. But he seemed to have an extremely positive attitude about improving from the weekend as a whole in his post-elimination interview, so I'm excited to see what he can do with Pichu in the future. Melee Legend Armada also has the unfortunate distinction of going 0-5 this weekend with his litany of losses also coming at the hands of some incredible players. But unlike Arfang, Armada managed to take a game off of every single player he met in bracket. He went 1-3 against Leo, Esam, DeBuzz, and T, and even was able to take Lights Fox to Game 5. Without any wins here, it's looking pretty unlikely that Armada will be able to crack into the top 50 for this ranking period in Ultimate. However, this newly included member of the Esports Hall of Fame has definitely made some more headway in Ultimate, and it won't be long till we see him start taking sets instead of games off of this caliber of player. And the last of the 13th place players is Void, who got there on quite a different path than the others. He went 2-1 in his pool, grabbing an incredible win over Nairo with his Pichu, and by using his Pichu and Sheik to 3-2. Leffen. T, however, was able to get the best of him, winning three quick games and even pushing him to go Joker. Then, with his bracket path, there wasn't really much he could have done, falling 3-0 to Meister in winners and 3-0 to Esam in losers. So Void easily had the best 13th placing out of these guys, and I think most would say that he pretty much performed as expected. It's nice to see him back on stable ground now as a Pichu Sheik main, and I hope we see some Sheik buffs in the upcoming Terry patch so we can see more of her in bracket. That brings us down to the four ninth place finishers, well, we'll start with Leffen. Much like Armada, Leffen was able to keep close with pretty much everyone he played against, with Nairo being the only player he wasn't able to take a game off of. And if there was any doubt that he would be making it to the top 50 this season, his win over Tweak secured it no question. He also kept it quite close against Light in the set after that, and could have very easily taken it if a few more neutral interactions went his way. So even though Leffen walked away from Summit with only a single set win, the practice he picked up at the event will be exceptionally valuable for his future in Ultimate. Summit's weird format of having everyone come out of pools and winners can lead to some weird results like DeBuzz, who won his pool 3-0, tying with Leffen, who went 0-3 in his pool. DeBuzz took those three wins over Zachary, Tweak, and Mutace in pools, setting him up for an easy round one win against Armada in bracket. But after that, his Rosalina barely wasn't able to close it out in Game 5 against 
against Samsora. And then in losers, he ran into Esam, who was playing quite hot for all of day 3 who eliminated him from the event. So DeBuzz probably had the best 9th place finish you might ever see at any tournament with the quality of wins he picked up. Obviously, the Olimar main wanted to finish higher, but losing to 2nd and 5th place finishers is just something that can happen in this format. Another victim of the format was Mars, who also finished at the top of his pool, but ended up placing at 9th. Mars, Samsora, and Meister all finished the round robin pool 2-1, but because of the tiebreaker rules, Mars came out of the pool as number 1, beating Meister and Arfang, but losing a game 5 set to Samsora. He was gifted the other melee Swede in round 1 of bracket, but just like DeBuzz, he was then eliminated by some fierce competition, MKLeo and Zachary. The MKLeo set was a 3-0 sweep, and the Zachary set was tight, but after Zachary lost faith in his Rob after going down 1-2, Zachary's Joker took games 4 and 5 to take the set. And there's not really much to say beyond that, another one of the best 9th place performances you'll probably ever see from Mars. For a more cut and dry 9th place, look no further than Mutase. With a pull of Zachary, Tweak, and a buzz, it's no surprise that he came out of that 0-3. He did, however, push Zachary's game and watch to game 5, but sadly wasn't able to pull the W out in that set. That set did, however, prep Mutase to beat Esam during his last match on Saturday, who he has been beaten by before and has been known to have a peach problem. But that was the moment his bracket luck ran out as he was double eliminated by Meister's Game & Watch and T's Pac-Man. So Mutase is for sure thankful that he didn't leave the Summit House without a win, and with how far he pushed Zachary, I think more Smash fans will be giving him the respect he deserves in the future. And now, we're in the top 8. Throughout the weekend, Zachary put up what looked like sloppy game spreads across pretty much every set he played, with every set of his going at least 4 games. But what a lot of these actually are is just him feeling out what character he wants to use against certain players and in certain matchups. His set against Mutase that we talked about is actually the only one where he just stuck to one character. His wins for the event came against Tweak, Mutase, and Mars, and his losses came at the hands of DeBuzz, Light, and Esam. So I don't think this was a bad event by any means for the man of many characters. I actually think it will come to be seen as super useful for Zack in the future as he'll no longer have to throw away those one or two games on a character at the beginning of a set to find out who he should be playing. Light also finished at 7th besides the Japanese Prodigy. He had a much less impressive 7th place showing with his only wins at the event being over Armada and Leffen and over Zachary himself. His aggressive style just wasn't able to cut it in bracket this weekend with Nairo taking his second PGR win over him for the season and T appearing to finally figure out what to do against him to even up their record to 2-2 for the year. So Light didn't take any impressive wins back with him to New England from this weekend but also didn't really suffer any bad losses either. If not for Leffen beating week, Esam would have claimed the title of biggest upset at the event with his Game 5 clutch over MKLeo. Some may dismiss the win away because Leo went Marth for the entirety of the set, but with how frequently he sprinkled the Tipper Sortie throughout the rest of the tournament run, I'd say Leo was giving it his all here. This win, alongside Sweeping Light and 3 one Armada, had Esam and his rat finishing first in his pool. Unfortunately, that led to his previously mentioned set with Mutase that knocked him right into losers. But that fiery Esam who beat Leo was back again and led him to 3 0 Void, 3 1 to Buzz, and just barely clutch it out 3 2 against Zachary before making it up to Meister. Game & Watch is said to be a horrible matchup for Pikachu, so Esam tried to pull out a pocket zero suit to maybe try to sneak past Meister, but it just wasn't able to cut it and ended his run at fifth place. Ultimate Summit 2 showed us that Esam still does have a few problem matchups that he's got to figure out, but as a whole, it made his claim to a top 10 spot for the year even stronger. There at 5th with him is the Japanese Pac-Man T, who showed up strong to the event like most expected him to. He came out of his pool 2nd, beating Void and Leffen while getting 3-0'd by Nairo playing his only non-Pac games of the tournament as Roy in games 2 and 3 of that set. And then sadly, in bracket, we really didn't learn much more about the pack's potential because he ended up losing to Samsora and MKLeo, 1st and 2nd at the event respectively. And for wins outside of pools, he beat Armada and Mutase, who he was both the heavy favorite against, and played his fourth set of the year against Light, instead of any of the many players he still hasn't had the chance to meet yet in bracket. So the story of T being an unknown entity still continues on past Summit because of how many top level players he still has yet to face. Right above him at fourth was Meister, who continued to solidify his place in the conversation of Ultimate's best and let shine some of the cracks in Game & Watch that people have been desperately looking for. These cracks come in the form of bad character matchups for the flat zoner, Zero Suit, Palutena, and Sorties. And one of 
each can be seen in his losses to Mars in pools, Nairo's Palu in winner's bracket, and MKLeo's Marth in loser's bracket. Win-wise, Meister didn't really grab any that were expected of him with his list being Samsora, Arfang, Mudace, and Esam. But nonetheless, I think Meister is quite happy with the money he'll be taking home and that he was able to claim that last spot at Nightmare on Smashville. Coming in at third, we have Nairo, who is playing incredible all weekend, with his only real hiccup before top four being his game five loss in pools to Void. He tore through T, Leffen, Arfang, Light, and Meister, only dropping two games across those five wins. And although it was really dope getting to see him and Sam do reverse mains for game one of winner's finals, essentially throwing away that game really cost him. With an extra game, he easily could have taken the set and even the entire tournament if he could hold it together against MKLeo. But still, well, Nairo's had a great second PGR season, and while a win at Summit would have been nice, third is pretty great too. Every passing week, Samsora seems to give more and more reasons why he should be the rightful heir to the spot of Ultimate's second best player now that Tweak has fallen off. Mars, Arfang, T, DeBuzz, Nairo, and MKLeo is the incredible list of wins he added to his already exceptional resume for the year just from this weekend. He did have a lot of close sets this weekend, with his sweep against Arfang and the two grand final sets against MKLeo being the only ones that only went three games. So this means that this Peach's crown is far from untouchable, but for now, Samsora is ultimate second best player. And finishing first was none other than MKLeo. He's just so good. In so many situations where other players would have crumbled under the pressure or choked away leads when they start to slip, MKLeo stayed strong. He even gave away games all throughout the weekend, testing the limit of his Marth and Bracket to see when it may be the better option to bring out instead of his Joker. MKLeo still has only placed first or second in this PGR season, and I don't think there's anything that expresses how good of an ultimate player he is better than that. And that about does it for our recap of Ultimate Summit 2. Let us know down in the comments what was your favorite moment of Ultimate Summit 2. Also, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content on the competitive Ultimate scene in the future.